Hey guys, in today's class, I'll be teaching you how to draw a diagram after performing an indirect laryngoscopy. All the structures that you'd be seeing, I'd be labeling them as well. So what you see on screen is what an ideal diagram looks like. So first I'll be drawing it for you. I'll show you how to, perf uh, how to draw every structure and then I'll show you the labeling. So first you make a circle because what we see is via uh, indirect laryngoscopy mirror which is circular. So the first structure that you are seeing is the base of the tongue which is this. Then we see the epiglottis. So draw the epiglottis looking like the shape of upper lip. So this here is epiglottis. Now connecting the base of the tongue with the epiglottis are two pairs of folds, uh, two folds, one is a median glossoepiglottic fold and these are the lateral glossoepiglottic folds. Now the two uh, spaces in between these two, between the median and lateral glossoepiglottic fold, these two are the valicular region. Next we draw the true vocal cords. So this right here are the true vocal cords. So as you can see this region over here anteriorly is the anterior commissure. Now in between them are the two arytenoids in the interarytenoid region. Now from the connecting the vocal cords to the epiglottis is the array epiglottic fold. In the posterior part of the array epiglottic fold lies two cartilages which are the corniculate and the cuneiform cartilage. So this here is the array epiglottic fold. You do the same thing on the opposite side, the two corniculate and the cuneiform cartilages and then as the AE fold on the right side. So now these spaces over here, this space and this space over here, these are the pyriform sinuses. Next what you see are, these are the false vocal cords, these here are the false vocal cords. Then you see the tracheal rings. Then here lies the post cricoid area and here lies the posterior pharyngeal wall. So if we had to look at the diagram, a label diagram, you will see here first of all what you need to know is the left of the patient will always be on your right side. So that is a very very important thing to remember. The left of your patient will be drawn on the right side of yourself. So the first structure that we are seeing here is the base of the tongue. Next we see the epiglottis. Now connecting epiglottis with the base of the tongue are the median glossoepiglottic fold and the lateral glossoepiglottic folds on both the sides. Now the region in between the lateral and the median glossoepiglottic fold are the two valicular regions. So this is the valicular region. So this here is a valicular on the right side this is on the left side. Next we see the true vocal cords. You see these two vocal cords and connecting they, they are connected anteriorly at the anterior commissure and on both sides of the true vocal cords are the false vocal cords also known as the vestibular folds. Then connecting the two vocal cords posteriorly lying are the arytenoid cartilages. This here is the interarytenoid area containing the arytenoid cartilages and now connecting the two arytenoids with the epiglottis are the two AE folds. So this here is the array epiglottic fold. So you see this array epiglottic fold in the posterior part has a corniculate and the cuneiform cartilages and then here it goes like this. So this these are the two AE folds. Now the region on the both sides of the AE folds are the pyriform fossa. So here you go this region and this region over here are the pyriform fossa. This is the post cricoid area and posteriorly lies the posterior pharyngeal wall. 
So this is how you draw a diagram after performing an indirect laryngoscopy. And if you had to show movements of vocal cord, you show like this. These two arrows means that the vocal cords are mobile in both the directions. If there is any uh, vocal cord palsy, the two arrows are not shown and instead we put a cut on it. So this is what you need to know for drawing an indirect laryngoscopy diagram. I will see you in my next video.